Hello my friends, welcome to Inside Electronic Channel, this is Uncle Misha and today we have a very interesting subject on my bench and this subject was already depicted, well not this particular one, not this model. So we have... Ooh, Harman Kardon HK300XM, but this is a different one. So I happened to... could not pass ooh, the marketplace deal on getting the another HK300XM for $20. As you see it's in okay cosmetic shape, it's a bit dusty, but that's pretty much it. The problem is I bought it right on the spot without even testing it, it just because I thought 300, sorry 300, HK300XM for $300 is a good deal because this is not low-end cassette player. This is pretty high uh, end as far as Harman Kardon goes because it has all paraphernalia, it has Dolby uh, noise reduction, it has even bias and record calibration tone generation right here, here. You see that? Bias tone. So this guy, yes, it's still two head deck, but it has all these features and record calibration. So this makes this guy be very good. It also had sand dust head, Two motor uniplane transport, whatever that's almost all Harman Kardon decks has it, have it. But this one, I'm actually mistaken about uh, it. Says I think it has only Dolby B noise reduction. So this make it pretty old cassette deck. It has this, which I don't like the uh, mechanical counter, meh. But you have what you have. Yep, here we are, and I like the the peak meters. It's not super detailed, but still pretty good. So, what are you gonna do before we actually turn this guy on? Ah, and also it has all buttons, right? Because the previous guy, what I repaired here, has busted. Ugh. Power button and other buttons were busted. So this guy has everything, and front is actually in better shape. So technically, if this guy is not working, I can actually make one out of two. But before we power up anything, let us see what's inside because who knows maybe there's a cockroaches or dead mouse inside i do not know or like cigarette smoke or some other junk that we have to be careful because if we power all this up it's gonna you know make a smoke blow up and so on and so forth and also it gives me a chance to understand if there is any corrosion if there is any like melted belts a uh, blown capacitors, shorted something. It's all very important before you power it up. Actually, take a peek. All right. So here's the moment of truth. Okay. Baba. So what do we have? It's actually looking relatively okay. A bit dusty and stuff. So you guys, if you remember my previous. It's looking okay. Oh my god, it's actually looking better than I thought. It's actually looking good. If you guys remember my previous video related in relate about the same cassette deck, if you remember, it has big ass cracks here. This was broken and relay was broken. So now I actually see this relay. I see how it looks like. And now I can actually order replacement relay for the other one. But the other one with my um, with the case with I with my I think it's gonna be working good. I think it'll be fine. I don't really have to MacGyver too much of things. So I quickly check the capacitors. It looks like all capacitors are okay. There is no nothing leaking. Obviously, it'll be also nice to see from the bottom. I'm gonna take a look as well just to see if there is no any electrolyte leaking through. But I look through capacitors here and I don't really see any. Um, any leaking capacitors, which are really nice, very nice to see. So belt, let's take a look at the belt. Belt a little bit floppy for my liking, and there is a counter belt. Yeah, it's a bit floppy as well. But counter belt, not that of a big deal. So everything else seems to be okay. So this area is dusty. Probably this is where the grill is. It has two grills like that and obviously the most dusty part is here and the most dusty part right here, which is kind of meh, but that's really easy to clean. Okay, transformer is fine. This is another here. 
is it some kind of protection capacitor maybe because fuses where are fuses I don't see fuses hmm maybe fuses here okay we have the remote connection the, yeah this guy still has a remote capability wired remote but still mm -hmm. has uh, two outputs high and low which is actually pretty cool and uh, output level configuration is here mm. control so yeah it seems to be looking okay it's really kind of messy oh, very beautiful Alma capacitor here another one yeah yeah look at this massive relay it's actually very nice that this this cassette player doesn't have this wire going through instead they're actually switching um, between playback and record mode using relays which is very very nice all right so I guess we're good to go and power this up so let's see all right power it up Yep, the uh, capstan wheel is spinning, motor spinning. Let's do eject and see what do we have. I can just unscrew. Oh yeah, it's a bit, oh my god, it's a bit dusty. I definitely need some good, good cleaning. Yeah, look at this, it's all dusty. Yeah, it's, I'll clean this up, of course. It's actually in good shape, but just dusty. Head look a bit dirty for my liking. So yeah, I can shut it down. I don't need it. So it's electronically seems to be it's going, it's powering up, showing segments. Let me try to let's let's try to, to get together look at the at heads. Okay, so here we are looking at head and head looks like a bit dirty. There's a bit of a something on it. So probably gonna good make a good scrub. It's got a white crop right here. I don't know what the hell is it? Yeah, it looks like it just scrapes off. Yeah, it's probably. I'm using the plasticky um, little little tool. The erase head. Yeah, the pinch roller looks funny. I must say, it's like. First of all, it's wobbly. Hmm. Hmm. Pinch roller is really hard to show you. Here is a pinch roller. It's definitely not good. This is not nice. You have to address that. And it's I'm not sure. It looks like bigger than the. It's look bigger. So let me take a look at the the first cassette deck I have and compare the pinch roller because, you know, I'm not sure if this is good. Yeah, it's also glazed, but this is this that's what we can easily fix the glazing. But the pinch roller size looks bigger than I expected. So let me take a look at the other deck. So yes, 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 the pinch roller clearly looks different. This one it seems to be a bit bigger. Uh, here is the photo of the pinch roller in the, my first cassette deck which I think has the original pinch roller because it's very similar to my uh, um, CD401 which share exactly the same tape mechanism as this guy so this is something to be to address I'm not sure what's the effect of different sides of pinch roller and I think it's like it's not just a different radius it's like a larger wheel essentially but it also feels like it's thinner and it has to be it also wobbles I don't like this wobbling thing anyway I'm still gonna clean up everything here and I can I will try to play cassette to see you know how is it all right guys I think I know wh where is the catch why this cassette that was so cheap take a look at this so now I'm gonna press the button here just to kind of simulate that there is a cassette in and press forward Obviously works. Plus the wind works. Stop. But let's see when what's happened when I play. Press play. Did you notice something missing? So our head solenoid is not moving. So despite the, the fact that everything mechanically seems to be rolling, the solenoid, which is supposed to raise the head up to the position is not moving. There are two options here. First of all, it may disconnect from the arm. Number two, possibly 
a the shmoo whatever was lubricated like ages ago solidified and that's why this thing is not moving number three uh, I hear something clicking so solenoid probably more or less alive but there is a solenoid itself maybe Gonski so now when I know that there is uh, something up with the pinch roller which is right here and something maybe up with the solenoid yeah this doesn't sound like a super you know free lunch so definitely have to do some work here which obviously require taking apart the tape mac and usually with this sort of tape mac with this kind of Harman Kardon um, linear ultra wide band linear face cassette decks it's a bit of pain in the ass but we definitely will do it okay so in order to actually get access to the tape mechanism we have to unscrew all the screw on the perimeter and remove the front panel including all these knobbies and stuff like that this uh, everything has to be removed here and then we can talk so I'll do it off camera so here a bit crooked but we are trying to service this guy so now I would like to actually have access to completely remove this front panel here it is in order to get ac proper access to tape mac so one of the connectors here I just disconnected uh, is looks like a one of the buttons I don't remember which one is this and now we still have problem with this wire which I actually soldered it just right here and to deal with that I guess it's better to desolder it and before I desolder Here's my marker here. I'm gonna just mark it minus, and here I'm gonna put plus. Essentially meaning like you know positive and negative. I'm not sure if they are positive negative because it could be some IC, who knows? But it definitely has to come. Come out. Maybe so nice. I probably will come up with some sort of connector. This is ridiculous. Like, it doesn't have to be soldered. It's not like it's some kind of mission critical thing. It's just a freaking LED. All right, that's be so much easier. All right, these guys are off. That's just this is to power LED indication. Yeah, I definitely come up with some kind of connectors here because this is just insane. Okay, so now we have to. Yeah, this, this guy is always tricky to take apart. So this Harman Kardon's tape deck, they are... Oh, I have to remove this and gain access to... Yeah, well... To this. Which is still kind of... I'm gonna help myself with screwdriver. Alright. One is off. But it's just one out of two. And the second one is deep down here. It's ridiculous. Why this is designed like this? So this we try to remove. I'll show you what we try to remove here. I just need to use, I don't know what I have to use, like pliers. In order to press on the little latch. hope I'll be able to well it's probably easier when you remove this board which is the one I remove it now okay we have it but it's so annoying now you will see what I'm talking about I hope I hope I disconnected the right ones it'll be hilarious if I if I didn't Okay, here we are. So now we have it separate. I was talking about the button control. So here, does this stuff is at least it's like on connectors, right? Not on, not just directly soldered straight into the into the board. So this is backside of the of the main panel here. So yeah, we now we completely we can put it aside and we have complete or better access to the tape mechanism okay so here is our tape mechanism of interest 
let's go look a little bit closer so here okay so this give give us a the, um, this position gives us a good chance, good access to the uh, tape bottom, the tape mac, and as you see, the tape gantry, for better word, is actually moving pretty, pretty f free or freely, even a little bit too wobbly, I would say. I'm not sure if you can address that, if it's matter. A little, little screw here, I think. Can I tweak it? I can tweak it later. Anyway, a bit wibbly wobbly, so that has to be addressed somehow as well. I don't like this, but maybe that's how it's supposed to be. Maybe when it's like um, all the way around, it's fine. But looks like there is no any any f like friction from solenoid. It's just e e e moving if super easy back and up and down. That's definitely concerning. Also, this um, gives us a good chance for this to to take a look at this pinch roller, which I'm gonna do somehow. Yeah. All right, so let's just angle it like that. Okay, so yeah, this panel has to be removed, but I will leave it for now because it protects heads from accidental damage. So everything is here. I just do not understand. So when, oh, okay, when this thing is up, you cannot open your uh, door, which is correct. You see this? It doesn't open open so this little metal lever goes under and protects it which is good which is that's how it's supposed to be but where is the solenoid supposed to be connected I do not see that I do not see so have to consult the service manual all right, uh, okay, I think I figured this out. Uh, so even without service manual, I think I was poking around, I found a solenoid that actually drives the mechanism. So this is this big solenoid. So I think this is the stop solenoid, this is a main solenoid. So what we're gonna do now, uh, we're gonna actually check if the coil is... Yeah. If is the coil is okay, then we're gonna continue because looks like I'm gonna check in the wire connection. Obviously, there is a each solenoid has a diet here, both of them. Okay, that's just to for for clamping the back EMI. And looks like these solenoids are connected. Ah, they connected to this. I don't know why, but they connected to the same point. So this white wire and this blue is essentially the same. So let me buzz the solenoid. Right, we are in ohms mode and see what we have. What do we have? Do we have something? We have nothing. Well, but because there is a... D no. What? Let me do diet mode. It's a short. No, it's not. This is short. What I'm talking about. Is it a bad connection that I'm following? Not understanding what I'm, what I'm doing here. Okay, let's reverse. Uh, heck. Wait, one more time. Okay. No, there is a hundred something ohms. Okay, 150 ohms. Okay, this sounds like correct. I would, I would think so. That would be correct. So solenoid is not busted. It's not shorted. It's not. It's not. Uh, broken, so I assume. So then, now I have to definitely take a look at the service manual. Okay, my friends, let's take a look at the schematic here. So um, here are our solenoids. So like, uh, here is the play solenoid, and there is a break solenoid. I assume the break solenoid is the smaller one. Um, where is it? Here. Let me show you that. Right, this is the play solenoid. This is the brake solenoid. Okay. 
I sorry, this is the play solenoid, this is the brake solenoid. And also um, looks like all of them are on this uh, connected together with the motor on the same leg. So and this one is 14.7 volts, so capstan motor and those solenoids are energized from the same source. Very interesting. So who drives those solenoids? We have these transistors here and here. So those two guys we have to double check. So there is some voltages right here. We can check that. But first we can see if there is voltage first of all here. So that's going to be the same as the capstan. 14 volts, right? And then we have to check a voltages Here it says 0 0.8. I'm sure what is this? this I think this is in normal state. So 0 0.8 On brake solenoid, which just doesn't matter it Doesn't say voltage on this solenoid. So we're gonna check that we're gonna measure all these voltages and then we'll figure out what we can do. Obviously we have to power this device in this kind of weird condition, but let's do it. Uh, yes, it's all, all super awkward, but so uh, ground and this I, I assume... Okay, let's see what we have here. We have 15 volts here. And what do we have on another side of this? We have 15 volts, very interesting. 15.7 here, 15.7 here. What do you? 15.7 here, 15. It's mind boggling. What's going on? Well, at least instead of 14.7, we have 15.7. That's all right. But clearly, it's not shorted to anything because I mean if that would be shorted that just be let me reverse polarity by the way okay I thought that diets would do but because it's going through sol solenoid well because uh, the solenoid is essentially a like a big in this case it works as a big resistor uh, I don't remember what was the resistance of both solenoids it's very hard to tell but unless this is those uh, uh, um, transistors are turned on I have also checked voltages right here everywhere in order to understand if this is actually working as it, as it is supposed to be because if there is a 15 volt here uh, this probably has like I don't know 600 ohm or something resistance and with current pretty much zero it's going to be the same potential on uh, the other side so voltage drop will be super minimal yeah so we can actually oh interesting huh okay oh I see Mm-hmm. Okay, this is what I'm, what's happening. So this, so, um, so I just shorted one of the legs of solenoid, the other one, not the one which is common, which is straight with the capstan motor. Otherwise, capstan motor would stop. The other one. So when I do that, solenoid engages. So solenoid is not that. So I assume either the the circuit which actually drives this training because it's. Where, where is that circuit which actually drives this transistor? Yikes, oh here. Yes. So we have to double check all this. Yeah, so we have to double check all this and check this transistor, this transistor and see if this is this number four, whatever this chippy is, I don't remember. We have to do, we have to see all, all what this guy is because I thought it's actually going to be connected straight to this guy, but looks like not. It's some sort of mm, oh wow well, eh. yeah I don't, I don't I don't have any more schematic actually printed out except this, but uh, this looks like a is it operational amplifier or some sort of driver? This is probably a driver. I don't believe this. It is a motor driver. Here we are. Because it has DC real motor connected straight to it. Okay. And what else is connected straight to it? A 
I'm just checking the how so I'm a bit not following oh okay Mm, no, this is not the drive circuit. This, this is this not gonna drive this thing. It's just um, just voltage. Okay. But anyways, I have to check all these voltages straight uh, on this device. I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who drives this thing. Oh wow, it's very complicated driving circuitry. I thought it would be much simpler. Just a s straight from the microcontroller, one transistor straight to solenoid but it's like whoa it's really involved so I have to pull this board out and start testing straight with it so we need a long screwdriver and it has to be Phillips that's our Phillips long Phillips screwdriver it's not thick enough they have yes this is bigger I was hoping probably fallen down that's all right and another one. Oh well Okay, so this is our board. It's like full chalk packed of things. It's just really serious. Serious board here. Mm -hmm. Let me visually inspect it and see if there is any kind of busted anything. I don't really see any broken transistors, any burned burn marks and stuff like that all right so okay we have we need to find transistor 1206 no we need yeah only one transistor 1206 this 1206 this transistor we need to look at and measure around it and this is 1206 is 2 sd 863 okay and uh, probably gonna be like on the beefier side but the, oh my gosh it's really hard to find it especially when it is hiding uh, behind this i see i think this is the b yeah this is this is something quite beefy here this is ba 66109 i don't even know what the heck is it but it's like beefy one it's a driver definitely driver of a sword Yeah, 12.06 mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a little bit of a problem. Looks like this schematic is different from this guy. Okay, so first of all So here's for example this AN6250 which is this cheapy. I don't, again, I'm not sure what it is, but looks like Yeah, I don't know what it is. 7 pin jobby. I'm not sure let's say op amp potentially yeah so this guy is 1301 here but here there is no 1301 so there is this 301 so it looks like we have to instead of look for 1206 look for 206 but that doesn't instill any confidence because that's mean potentially that 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 this board and this schematic is not um Okay, I found 206. It's a kind of on the bigger side transistor and it says 863. 863. Okay, at least this is the same kind of transistor. And uh, 207. Let me see, just 207 should be, I don't know where it is. It's exactly the same kind of transistor. No, it is, it is not. Just want to just do sanity check here. D355. 
Okay, I found it. So here is 207 and it is actually connected as well to here and it is SD355. So we are sort of okay. Now I have to insulate this board from the rest of the stuff using this IKEA Yonso piece of paper just to kind of maybe even oh, probably not the best idea I just realized because maybe like this <sighs> all right we'll try to poke around here Okay, we are measuring here. Uh, it's really hard to put multimeter here, but believe me. So this is the base, and it measures minus 18.4, not 18.2. And the meter I just measure, it actually measures 18.4. So this guy seems to be doing what it's supposed to do. What about collector, which is very hard to reach here? Okay, what about this 1207 guy? So again, base supposed to be 0 0.8. Again, soup, oh, I won't be able to reach to this base. Okay, I'll try my best. Mm -hmm. Base here says 0. Okay, emitter supposed to be 0. And it is zero. Base is zero. Interesting. Uh, okay, guys. So uh, I, I have connected the power. So not power. The control buttons right here. Sorry, they're just hiding behind the sheet of paper. Okay. Like, ah, oh, that's hard. Sorry. It's <laughs> All right, so I just try to move it for you. Okay, here are the buttons. So I connected buttons back to the board. And now let's um, let's see voltages when I press. Okay, let's see if I can operate it properly first. Okay, I need to engage these little thingies as if cassette is there and press play. Whoa, what is this click? Don't tell me the solenoid is working now. working I this is ridiculous <laughs> okay uh, maybe uh, maybe the whole thing was just to move it a few times back and forth and <laughs> that's it uh, but but believe me this thing was not stuck the pl okay stop okay I just kind of propped the board by, by, back at uh, where it's supposed to be and uh, let's try this again so I think this is the can I just engage it like this yeah it's actually clocks pretty good okay I mean I don't care if it works it works let me plop cassette and see what's going on here Okay, we have our favorite Garavi Sokak. Let's do eject, which I don't remember what the hell, where I have. Okay, it's eject. Just plop it like this. And find headphones. Okay, we have headphones connected. Garavi Sokak inserted. And let's see. It plays. Okay, where is the output? I don't remember. Output level is here. Okay, obviously output level is quite a bit scratchy, so that has to be addressed. Oh, something is pretty hot here. I feel, I feel, oh, this, this heat sink is pretty warm. Oh, wow, I, f I feel heat coming out of it, like, just like this. Oh wow, it's pretty hot. What? It's pretty hot. Okay, so this guy is a candidate 
to be replaced. That's it, I can't hold it any longer than this. Ow! Shit, okay, I have to take a look into this. Yeah, very scratchy, but it's working! It works! Okay, looks like our counter is not working. Yeah, counter is not working, it's not rotating for some reason. Why? Let me see. It's stuck or something? No, why? How do you... It's stuck! It's not... It's... Frick, it's stuck! How is it possible? It's not rotating. Okay, this pulley is rotating, okay? That pulley is super stuck. Have, have ever, ever, never seen anything like that? Okay, let me stop this thing. Yeah, rewind is okay. Forward is okay. Okay, so there is a little idler right in here. So technically, it's nice. Would be nice to, nice. To, it's actually quite accessible from this angle. I'll, I'm probably gonna clean it up. Usually, this is like a weak spot in this kind of tape mechanism, kind of very annoying to clean, but it's accessible. So it's uh, you can remove this panel, a few screws here, and then you can even actually remove the whole idler and clutch assembly. So it's not too too bad. All right. So now we have to address the counter. One belt looks like it's okay, but this pulley, double pulley pulley on this side in transfer uh, momentum to this side is completely stuck. Let me get closer and see what's going on there. But at least it plays and both channels are working. I'm not sure if it records, but it plays. <laughs> 